Hey everybody, this is Petey from Spin Rack, and since episode two of The Shield was out, I wanted to just kind of um, go over some things from the comic book. Because it kind of seems like they're trying to do a little bit of the comic book, but they're going their own way, right? So we have something I didn't talk about in my other video, which I was kind of, since it was more about um, just some bits of the She-Hulk, I just wanted to introduce stuff like the Claremont issue. And that this time I'll talk a little more about She-Hulk breaking the fourth wall, right? So we have here, she's talking to it, sort of like George Burns. I'm pulling back the curtain, talking with Spider-Man. We're not gonna really go through that issue, right? Cause it's not gonna really, outside of this, and there's moments of her talking, but then I wanna get more to um, this issue with her father and this issue where she gets a job as a lawyer, as a uh, prosecuting lawyer, right? So if we go to this here, before I go to it, if you haven't gotten this book, you can, if you get the first 10, it's really nice. Black Panther story by um, Don McGregor and uh, Gene Colan, right? So we got She-Hulk, and she's sitting around at a house, and she's bored. Right, so she's not, then this one, she's not necessarily talking to the audience yet, right? But she's got a hot outfit on, right? She goes in, she calls the thing, who's the leader of Fantastic Four at this period. And she's trying to figure out what to do to deal with the you know, being in the doldrums of the holidays, right? So at this point, she imagines Dr. Doom coming. And she gets into this major fight with Dr. Doom. She punches him in the face and realizes, uh-oh, the Falco is going to like this, right? Then... Taking off her, it feels like she's taking off her clothes, but it's actually Magneto. All right. I never did buy a conversion, right? It's Magneto, it's really looking kind of like the Cockum one. It's really cool, right? And she kind of just sort of like some fun stuff. All right. And then Mobius was doing, came out with his story. So Byrne utilizes his style. And he has the Holy Mobius. So having that Galactus thing is really dynamic. I think, um, <coughs> actually, I, there's some, I guess, I don't know if I should show it. I got into this disagreement with Rob Liefeld what this would be him making fun of Mobius, which is, I mean, for guys who do homages of everything, you know, and homage again is when you hit control C, then control V. <clears throat> and complain about what Burns doing, right? So then Burn, so, so sorry, Ben kind of calms it down. She opens up that, she got a bunch of comic books, and then she turns to the audience. Let's see you in 1989. Mm. So this is the hint that they shouldn't be talking to the camera. So this was a fun thing. And I think he said he did this at the same time this issue came out. So it's a little more nutty, right? So what should I do first? I guess the legal thing happens. So let me do issue four first, all right? So in issue four, we get meet her golden age star. She's talking to the audience, right? And um, this was she, she's going to break the fourth wall. Now, if you notice, she struggled with the job. And here in the comic book, <clears throat> she's going to meet her new boss. And she's trying on all this stylish stuff. It's cool having all this stuff around. It's kind of, I think, one of the best issues that Bob Wycheck inked. This is really nice stuff. She tries on all this stuff. She got a nice outfit. And her, her, um, on the 
hint tell him that she's gonna he's gonna have a robot a robot um what was it a robot um what is that a robot butler that's gonna be well that was gonna be Roger the robot not um not rock 2000 right so then we have another subplot the Terran from the great US one comic book check it out it's really nutty and burn does a trilogy to that I hope these she hulks is successful enough for me to do that but um Burn meets his friend. I'm really sad that Wheezy didn't make it to the, um, Wheezy Mason didn't make it to the, to the TV show, right? So she meets a new boss, D.A. Towers, and the Dear Double Show, he's a black guy, right? Because she's, a, I think she's an L.A. one wearing this. She's a New York D.A. and works with a New York D.A. And she old faints, right? She sees her, um, boss. She's very attractive so she's like this is my new love interest and love interest he's married and has two daughters and then they said since when is he married <laughs> and since now i suppose it's the first time it's been mentioned and then this is when she breaks a fourth wall where she's trying to climb out of the panel and she's like burn what kind of game you play me control yourself we're in cold and printed our readers out there now is it right but Wheezy has the ability to kind of break through the panels, right? And I, this is a bit that um, um, I was very sad to see this used in Alan Moore's 1963 in the Hypernaut. Because I was looking at the Hypernaut and I was like, the Hypernaut is like the high end of imagination. And he's kind of had the She-Hulk bits where she kind of tears apart the corners of the pages and whatnot. <clears throat> so it's kind of a uh, buzzkill. So I was really liking the hyper knot, but to kind of have some of the same She Hulk bits. All right. So it hints that she was the blonde phantom. And she was the plain Jane with glasses that loved this guy, Mark Mason. And, um, but he liked, of course, the blonde phantom. So they kindly saved when the comic book didn't happen. They finally got married when the strip ended. Right? And then for some reason once the heroes start coming back they thought that they would be brought back so they would be young like the rest of them but of course it waited too long and passed. Right? And it gets serious and then it gets silly again. Right? So the stilt man this is one character that Byrne has really done great in, like, because I think he used, only used him twice, but this is in comparison to Frank Miller using him and making him into um, Turk, right? So she takes off uh, the majority of her clothes. He's going to take, she's going to take on the stilt man, right? You have to imagine, this isn't a stilt man that has adamantium. At one point, he had adamantium. I think they got rid of that. That's a little too much, right? So here. He calls her a third grader. So she had done some other stuff to him. So this is one of the few times where he do use kind of character that became a lame villain and utilizing him to his strengths. And it's kind of the cool stuff you could do. He kind of pushes her into ground and then her head is right above the train. So she's, it's a, it's a duel, right? So she, so Wheezy's like, I got to get involved. But then she imagines she can't actually do anything. So she utilizes her brain, right? So she puts the grease and of course the stilt man, and that's really, really visually strong. Right? But Stilt Man is not without his resources and she's gonna come and um and he's actually there to kill somebody and it's like wow. Right? And she comes and then they do another gag. They split some 
Because he's hanging out and he gets to bring back her clothes. Like, why aren't the rest of your clothes torn up? And he has a comic book code thing, which you can see here over there. That's what's protecting her. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't translate to the to the movies, but maybe if they have um, TV guide, TV advisories, they could use that, right? And then we get a cool way to get his her um. What's that thing? The the credits in there. And this was uh, I believe a uh, a Hercules subplot. He's Mr. Powers. Did you see in this story? And this was another subplot where she was gonna um, advertise plus size outfits. So here she goes in for a new job. She's not pushed away because she's a she hulk and has to take a wacky um, district attorney job, right? So later when Byrne came back, since they kind of torched the whole um, Byrne's early run, he wasn't able to do much with the, you know, the attorney at law part because they had kind of cut him off at the knees and he wasn't able to do what he had planned. See, I think at the, his last issue, issue eight, he has, she has another court case. But um, I just want to show you that she goes for a job as a She-Hulk, right? Because she's stuck as a She-Hulk in this. And that's going to lead to this issue. That's her father. That's her, the, you know, the original her. And this is actually a um, Howard Chaykin bit where they can't answer the phone. What are they doing while they're not answering the phone, right? Use your imagination. In, the, in issue eight, Chris Kringle gave her a gift. And Wyatt chose it. Since... She'll has been through so much with the can you know, Burn being pushed out and uh, Wyatt being not allowed in the first part of the series. So much had happened, he, she decided to just bring Wyatt in as the love interest for a while, right? And and Wheezy's going through a transformation where she um was just rejuvenated. Right, and during the Mole Man storyline, right, so they get to hang out. She's with her and his people, but she has a sad moment. Talks about a bunch of stuff that um, he doesn't know because it's all comic book stuff that he doesn't have any idea about. But they kind of um, have a very healthy relationship. Right, and another subplot. This is the makeshift subplot, which was changed from what was originally planned. So, they're gonna go to She Hulk's farm. Right now, I remember if you remember the last story, last time that She Hulk's father was kind of the J. Jonah Jameson, kind of the human character that was struggling or had a campaign against She Hulk. Right, and they're in L.A., but they see snow, but it's actually plastic snow, right? And she meets, this is her, her thing to make her feel at home during Christmas and sees her father. He's kind of, she, he's kind of taken with the blonde phantom with Wheezy. And of course she is also, and they meet She-Hulk's family. And this is what I brought you here for, right? Here's her older relatives, right? And that's what they kind of did in the comic book, in the TV show. But here she goes through the um, the Marvel Universe Master Edition. It doesn't say she has any family. She said the mother's deceased. Keep that in mind. No brothers and sisters, All right? So he see him. Well, they look. He looks totally different. I don't even know what to say. So, um, but he has this moment where he's kind of wishing. This is um, what's the name? Jen, when she was a kid, a picture of her and this thing, and he's sad because she's stuck at the She-Hulk, right? And you think, what? No, he doesn't tell her what's going on. And this is the supporting cast from She-Hulk's original series that they kind of successful, but Zach Burr is still kind of, you know, stuck on the She-Hulk and get someone just like her, right? And they get Richard, and they both are rich now. She's happy that these guys got a happy ending. 
All right, and there's mistletoe. So you got Wheezy and Jim's father kissing. So it's a happy moment by all. They eat, have fun. So this is cool. This is cool. And this, one of those anchor pages, but an anchor page with a mundane setup. Right, with Wheezy looking in the fridge. And this is what they say, the shot to pay off this page to make it money worthy. But Burn uses a mundane sort of thing for a quiet moment where she gets some, gets a sandwich, right? And then she hulk father is like, Jennifer was always the daughter, all, was always all the daughter I ever needed, Louise. Bright, beautiful, even in a line of work in her own way, right? And yes, you're right. The Shirok is really something. But, talk about being proud of her. I miss my Jennifer. I really miss. I guess they have time to decide they want to do this, to have this kind of moment. But she's not stuck as a She-Hulk because obviously, you know, you're an actress. You don't want to be a digital character, right? So she has a sad moment. Not sure what she can do. She got a present from, this would be a Christmas wish. So she opens it and she gets to turn back to Jen Walters, right? And they have this moment together for Christmas, right? So a tender moment. So a lot of times I was talking with someone and she was kind of say these changes to make it more realistic and stuff like that. And ultimately there is realism in the books already. The problem being is that if you try it yourself, people will get kind of stuck not wanting to do what's on the page and just go their own way. You know, I've tried, done that sort of exercise where you transcribe it and I've done it where I've come up with my own stuff and it doesn't, it's always more fun where you kind of make your own stuff. So, but you're getting paid big bucks, so I can't being at home and saying I want to <laughs> you know write a fantastic four scene that's all my own is different than being paid and saying hey why don't we just use this it's here but this to give you some bits that um kind of utilize in the She-Hulk story maybe I should have done issue eight but um just want to show her kind of going for the job and whatnot maybe once she does more of a case again I'll do that next issue but I'll kind of try to give you some comics I don't have the original series at here, but, you know, it just um, show you kind of the differences that's in there from what's on TV. All right, spin the rack out.